from Zoyduit Snobber in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Laser eye and And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here's an analysis from abcnews.com. They analyze everything there at abcnews.com. It says here, in the battle of the spouses, the battle of the spouses, the early edge is Michelle Obama's in favorable views and intensity of sentiment alike. But there are sharp differences among groups and plenty of room to move for the less well-known Cindy McCain. Says here, 48% of them, by the way, most bangable of the two, definitely Michelle Obama. Are you kidding me? Not even close. That blondie washout that uh, McCain is married to, that uh, trophy wife, no, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. Says here, 48% of Americans in the new ABC News Washington Post poll see Obama favorably. This is Mrs. Obama we're talking about. Versus 39% for Mrs. McCain, a nine-point Obama advantage. Slightly more, though, also in the quirks of statistics and poll-taking, Slightly more, though, also view Obama unfavorably. 29% versus McCain's 25%. Substantially more, 36% haven't yet formed an opinion of Mrs. McCain versus 23% in Mrs. Obama's case. Well, of course. I think they've been hiding Mrs. McCain in a room somewhere. You know, it's good for the goose, good for the gander. If you know what I mean. Says here, uh, for both these are sizable numbers who have yet to make a judgment. The popularity of presidential candidate spouses does not drive vote preferences. But in contests where every advantage can count, spouses do play a very public role. Cindy McCain is highlighting her support for children's charities <sighs> with a visit to Vietnam this week, while Michelle Obama hosts the ABC program The View on Wednesday. That's today. There are big differences among groups in views of the two women, mainly driven by political partisanship. Obama's favorable score is 14 points higher among women than McCain's. 54% versus 40%, and as is many of Obama's other best groups, the chief reason is simply because women are more apt to be Democrats. An even more striking gap may cut to Obama's independent persona among the 2 in 10 Americans who call themselves feminists, men and women alike. 60% view her favorably. That drops to 45% among non-feminists who are twice as apt as feminists to see her unfavorably. Ob Obama's ratings peak at 84% favorable among African Americans, 66% among liberals and Democrats alike, and 61% among young adults ages 18 to 29. Not surprisingly, those are among her husband's core groups, 
Indeed, it's his support that seems largely to drive views of his wife. Among people who prefer Barack Obama for president versus John McCain, 73% like Obama's wife, too. McCain's support naturally inclines the other way. Though the difference is less striking, she's better rated by non-feminists, 41% favorable, than by feminists, 33%. She does best with Republicans, 62% favorable, and with her husband's supporters, this is Mrs. McCain now, 56% of whom like her too. But her favorability rating among conservatives, 46%, is a full 20 points below Obama's among liberals. Obama also inspires stronger opinions. The number of Americans who have a strongly favorable opinion of her is double the number who say so about McCain, 21% versus 10%. That's because nobody knows who the hell Sidney McCain is. On the negative side, 18% see Obama strongly unfavorably, as do 12% for McCain. In only a few groups does either of these women's unfavorable ratings outscore their favorables. More African Americans, under 30s, and Democrats see McCain unfavorably than favorably. It's close among liberals. And more Republicans and conservatives see Obama unfavorably than favorably, with seniors about evenly split. Finally... In a hangover from the hard-fought primary campaign, Obama's favorable rating is a good deal higher from her husband's primary supporters, 74%, than from Hillary Clinton's, 51%. Blah, 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 blah. Now, uh, I'm amazed at the amount of time and energy that was put into this. Because what difference does it make who a presidential candidate is married to? I guess with the exception of Hillary Clinton. Uh, what difference does it make? You know, as long as uh, your spouse is not in the Oval Office, uh, turning it into the Oral Office or whatever, uh, I don't see uh, what the big deal is. Does it matter who Barack Obama is married to? Does it make a difference? I mean, do we really care about first ladies? Yeah, how do you become a first lady? There's no, there's no election for that. You become first lady by boffing the guy who becomes president. That's the inauguration process. The president delivers you the old Stromboli. Boom, you're the first lady. That's how it works. Should we care who these women are? Should we care about what, what charities they support or whether they're good hosting TV shows or, I mean, should we care about any of this stuff? Why does it even matter? Look, Americans have already decided we don't want a chick president. We've already decided. Does it really matter what chick the president is married to? Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Get in, get off, get out. That's my motto, man. Don't be stuck with one girl too long because there's nothing but headaches and problems. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. All these polls now on who's more popular, Michelle Obama or Cindy McCain. Who cares? Why would that make a difference? David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, David. Uh, hey, Dad. Uh, first time, long time? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, uh, with uh, as it's been proven many, many times on this show, uh, women have a profound inf uh, influence on just the guy's train of thought and his decisions. Really? So tell us the influence that uh, uh, that uh, George W. Bush's wife has had. What is her name? Does anybody uh, know? Uh, I, I don't know even it. know. Uh, Mrs. I Bush. Know what? What? Oh, Laura Bush. I should know that. My mother's name was Laura. Yeah, no, what? Too, what yeah. influence has she had specifically? Legislation, uh, politics. Let's hear. I, I couldn't say too much about politics. You just that, said she, they they have a profound influence, so I'm I'm okay. waiting to hear some substantial uh, some substantial report here. 
I was referring to more of the psychology of it, how a man will respond when... I want to know in what I want to know in what profound way Laura Bush has influenced George W. Bush. I want the specifics. Uh, I could say public view. I think that would be... In what way? How people see it. How? Um, I believe she may have softened a lot of the blows with... Um, I haven't seen her a lot in TV, uh, public viewing, but what, she, what I have heard, I know it softens... Uh, let me be a little more specific. Um... I don't know, thoughts on the war and gas prices and how he reacted to Katrina. He uh, is the least popular president since they started oh. taking polls. Oh, yeah. What I'm, did, what uh, did she do? What did she do to help? Uh, I don't, not one I couldn't say. I was referring. I'm sorry, I called in about uh, more of a. So you had no uh, idea what you were talking about when you called it. I had a different idea on the situation. I apologize. Well, I asked you to prove your point, and you're incapable of doing it, right? That is correct, too. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOPS setting up and knocking them down. It's that simple. Let's say hi to Zach on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Great. Uh, hey, I just wanted to ask what you thought about um, first ladies like Nancy Reagan, you know? She had kind of a profound impact on something. Well, she had a profound impact on Ronald Reagan. She had to show him which way to the Oval Office. <laughs> you got a point She there. had to empty his colostomy back. I mean, uh, come on. You know, but, you know, she spearheaded things. Like, you know, wasn't she pretty involved in the war on drugs? Oh, yeah, did a great job, too. How's that drug war going? <laughs> well, you know, not so good on this side of town. All right, so what is the profound impact I keep hearing about? I, You know, they hold a lot of press conferences, and they're on TV a lot. But what actual impact do they have? Well... <laughs> You know, I think it just gets their face out there. If they have strong initiatives. Well, what, what, like but, 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 but who pays any attention? <laughs> well, if they're loud mouths like that. Let's, let's talk about the literacy campaign of Laura Bush. Have you been to the post office lately or the DMV? <laughs> Can't say I have. You haven't? So you never had to renew your driver's license? Uh, you know, I do it through a driver's Never AAA. bought a postage stamp? Uh, <laughs> You know, not in the post office, no. Well, put it this way. If you ever stop by the post office or the DMV, you let me know how the literacy campaign is going, will you? <laughs> sure thing. I don't think it's going too well. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right there. So really, uh, these, 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 the, the wives of presidents have no impact at all. It doesn't matter who they're married to, and it doesn't matter if they're married. Hey, Tom, well, let me ask you this then. You know, if, I mean, what if, uh, say, Bar uh, Barack's wife or McCain's wife she has, like, a you know strong feeling on going green and stuff like that and spearheads some initiative to, like... Blobbity, blobbity, blue. You know what? It doesn't make any difference. No one's paying any attention uh, to what the uh, first lady is saying. No one's well, paying any attention. This is a, just a big scam. You know, it's politically correct to say we care about what the gals think, but we don't. You're right. I don't. I just don't want some, you know, sort of initiative passing on, you know, saying I can't water my lawn or something like that because of, you know, Brock's wife or something like that. Well, we have no evidence that, that that's what she is in favor of. Uh, on top of that, I personally, as a guy, I'd rather have an unmarried president. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got a point there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Hey, Tom, uh, can you take me out O'Reilly style? Bill O'Reilly style, I certainly can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! F***ing thing sucks! <laughs> By the way, the Factor for Kids is available at Amazon.com. Bill will tell you how to raise your children. It's great. Chapter 1, what's a loofah, what's a falafel? 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. This is Noble on the Tom Likas Show. Hello? Hello, Tom. Hello, Noble. Yes. Yeah, it's good to hear, hear you. Long time. For sure time. it is. Yes. Um, yeah, I just want to say uh, it, it makes no difference what you, you're doing a job. So what difference does it make who you're back to? The only real difference is it, it makes is if she takes care of what she needs to so that when he goes out the door and runs for president or whatever, he feels good. Well, she's not home doing anything. She's with him. Uh, clearly, they have to hire people. Or have to depend on other family members to take care of what's going on at home because they haven't been home in two years. No, I mean, I mean that other stuff. Make sure he doesn't go out and needs to do any Spitzer type stuff. Oh, take so in other words, so in other words, she's got to take care of him in the sack. 
Right, right. Take care of him in the sack and, you know, let him go out feeling that he uh, feels good about it. Well, that's what every wife ought to be doing, don't you think? But, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, well, we never know that about the First Lady. You don't know that about the First Lady. I mean, they, if you a, look, all the crap they tell us about the First Lady is the First Lady getting the job done in the sack. No, they don't talk about that. That's what you want to know. That's what I'd like. I mean, that's, you know, that's the telling thing, right? Right. Yeah. Anyway, Tom, I love your show. Keep doing what you're doing. You're an educator. You're the man. Take me out with the bong hit. Here you go, Noble. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, uh, I could think of maybe one, Jane Adams. You had to go way, way back for that. Yeah. <laughs> Jane Adams. Yeah, I don't think anyone else after her has done much. I, I, what did Jane Adams do? Uh, did, for uh, those of us who are not history buffs like yourself. Oh, you know, she helped advise John Adams. She helped the uh, women's rights movement back then when it was just starting out. And she helped with all the, uh, you know, early history of our country, helped organize the government. Back then, there was no real uh, electronic news media of any kind. So nobody really knew the First Lady or the President. That's right. So... You know, from a public perspective, I really have no idea what a first lady accomplishes. I, I, the whole concept is silly. There's the president of the United States, and because the Midwest demands it, he has a wife. That's right. So That's it. It, it. it really doesn't matter who the wife is. Yes. Brian, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Matt. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I just wanted to say that uh, probably the only time it would really matter, it wouldn't really matter if he already got into office, but maybe when he was trying to get elected, is if she had some sort of, like, a sordid past. Like, if he went out when he was young and married, like, a Playboy or penthouse model or stripper even or something, and then he's trying to run for president, I mean, how? what do you think his chances are of getting elected from that kind of a scam? Well, uh, it certainly might affect his chances, but really shouldn't. It, I no, mean, I, personally, I personally, I would rather have a president who says, you know what? My wife is my wife. Yeah. She doesn't speak for me. She doesn't make policy decisions. She makes brownies. Well, and, and to add on to that, how long do you think it's going to be before we elect a president, a, a man who's married to another man? That's going to be a very long time. I, so I think that those are the only times when it really matters. It's just when he's trying to well, get I wonder if we'll him. call him the first man. <laughs> I don't know what they'd call him. The first gentleman. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe, so? I certainly can, Matt. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hi, hi there, Tom. Hey. Uh, about Hillary, yeah, she, you know, uh, she can be connected to some um, deconstructive influences in the, the original Clinton presidency. I mean, there was... According different... to who? Well, I, I, there... I don't have the facts with me, but well, she, if you don't a, have the facts, well, hold on here. But there is there is a connection between her and Stephanopoulos leaving, uh, you know, prematurely. All of this is gossip. Yeah. Uh, okay, you can say it's gossip. It is gossip about Stephanopoulos. Unless George Stephanopoulos or Hillary Clinton said it, it's gossip. All right. Well, we'll just have to go look. If if, if, if Michael Reagan said it on his conservative AM radio talk show. It's gossip. Okay, and how about uh, Nancy Reagan? And I believe there was, uh, she uh, was involved in a spat between, it was either Weinberger or Alex Haig, Alexander Haig. Again, gossip. Okay, I, we don't know. I mean, you, you know, you don't know. 
Well, I have you're calling up and repeating either, stuff. And yeah, but the point is, the, but the point is, you're repeating stuff. You don't, you don't know the source of it. Do you read the paper? Don't you remember anything you read? When you see this stuff on television, don't you make a note of it? I mean, come on. If you're going to call a national radio program and start quoting this stuff, you owe it to everybody to say where you got it from. This stuff is 10 to 20 years old. It doesn't matter how old it is. If you don't know where it's from, it's probably gossip. Okie doke. Okie doke. Jesus. This guy was probably listening to, you know... The Neil Bort show or one of those AM syndicated staticky talk shows. And, and he probably heard somebody express an opinion. And for him now, it's a hard, cold fact that he can't even remember who said it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Carlos on the Tom Likas show. What's up, Tom? Not much, Carlos. Hey, um, I think, uh, the first lady, or, you know, I think they, they kind of do have an effect on the president, because uh, I remember uh, Sean, Sean Hannity saying something about Michelle Obama. That Here we go again. You're going to quote a radio talk show host. That is not a source of fact. That is a source of opinion. I'm a radio talk show host. Don't be going around quoting me as a source of fact. No, I'm not saying... I'm I know Sean saying. Hannity, and Sean Hannity is an opinionated individual like me who goes on the air and expresses opinions about things like me, and you are taking an opinion expressed by Sean Hannity based on conjecture, and now you're going to state it as a fact. No, 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 I'm not stating it as a fact, because I don't, I, don't, I don't believe a lot of what Sean Hannity says, but I'm just telling you what he... Why, are you, why are you quoting him? What's that? Why are you quoting him? Why am I calling him? Quoting. Q U O. T I N G quoting. Why are you quoting Sean Hannity? Because that's what he said on the show. But that, that, that doesn't make it a fact. I know it's not. All right, so you're about to repeat some other radio personality's opinion. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I just repeated. I just I was just saying that sometimes it, it can have some type of effect. How? In what but, way? Because then, like, like in Sean Hannity's He'll say something, and then next thing you know, all his believers are believing what he says. But, but if and, and that can affect the election. Let me, let me, let me just say this: If radio talk show hosts are so powerful, how did Bill Clinton get elected twice? Oh yeah, I, I know they're powerful. I mean, that's that's my uh, no, no, no. They're not powerful. We are not powerful. That's what I'm trying to tell you. People were running around saying, Rush Limbaugh is so dangerous to America because he says things and people believe them. And, and, and they, they failed to remember that the target of most of his attacks, Bill Clinton, got elected twice. Yeah, he did. So how much power did Rush have? I guess not that much, but I think How much Sean power Hannity, does Sean Hannity have? I think he has a significant... Why do you believe that? Why do I believe that? Yes. Because I, I can just see in the way... You well, know, let he... me give you an example. I know Sean personally. Sean Hannity does not like John McCain as a candidate. Do you know that? Yeah, but he, likes, he doesn't like Barack Obama more. No, no, no. Stop right there. If Sean Hannity is so powerful, how did John McCain become the candidate of the Republican Party? That's a good question. You're damn right it's a good question. He's just a radio guy, like me. We have radio shows. They're entertaining. But do not get this idea that we speak and people march like Nazi Germany. That's ridiculous. Well, I know Sean has his, his, his uh, loyal followers. I I, again, everybody has loyal followers. None of them are have enough loyal followers to, to change the country. Do you understand that, and, and and by the way, I know Sean. He's a great guy. I love him to death. And I'm not saying anything about him that isn't true. Do you know that when Sean has the highest ratings he ever has in Los Angeles, 97% of the people in Southern California are not listening to him? Really? I didn't know that. 
How can somebody be so powerful if 97% of the people listening to the radio are not listening to him? Well, I don't know that. When Rush Limbaugh has his highest ratings in Los Angeles, 95% of people in Southern California are not listening to him. Yeah, but Southern California is a pretty small... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's only 11 million people here. It doesn't matter. It, in the entire country, if Rush Limbaugh has the 20 million listeners he claims to have, and it varies from 15 million to 20 million, wherever he claims, okay, that is one in 15 people. That means 14 out of 15 people are not listening to him. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. How can somebody who is not listened to by 14 out of 15 people be so powerful? I guess, they, I guess they, they're not. Because you are sucked in by the magic of radio. Because every one of these guys goes on the air, hello, we're here from sea to shining sea across the fruited plain with the biggest thing you ever heard, and you believe it. No, I don't believe it. Yes, you do. I just thought, you know, he had Yes, a... you do. <laughs> you believe it. All right, Tom. Sean Hannity, who I love dearly in Sacramento, he can't buy listeners, as an example. All right. I love him to death. I wish him nothing but the most money and success he can ever have, and I've known Sean for years. I've had dinner and wine with him many times, and I love him personally, and I trust him implicitly as, as an individual. I do, regardless of what he says on the air. But yeah. I'm telling you, we are all in the business of creating magic here. And you've been sucked in by these guys who tell you they're larger than life. When in reality, did you see the movie The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, I did. Do you remember when Dorothy goes behind the curtain with The Wizard of Oz? Yeah. You see, you haven't gone behind the curtain with The Wizard of Oz. I've had dinner with The Wizard of Oz repeatedly. Okay? <laughs> all right. Can you uh, take me out Bill O'Reilly style? Um, yeah, I'll take out Bill O'Reilly style. How appropriate. Here you go. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F*** it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Down like sucks. it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Like this. You say uh, women are just toilet? That does not make any sense. Human okay. toilet, yes. That is crap. Like, okay, a girl cannot be called a toilet. How appropriate. It's the Tom Likas Show. From my own backyard, Hollywood, it's Tom Likas. Here at 1-800-5800-TOM. ABC News released some survey talking about the popularity or lack thereof. Of the wives of the two presidential candidates, Michelle Obama and Cindy McCain. And I say, does it really matter who a president or a presidential candidate is married to? Does it really matter? Who cares? You know, when they appoint a president of Exxon Mobil, do I, do I know who the wife is? Does it matter? Do I care? You know, when they, uh, when they fire the CEO at Goldman Sachs, do I really care what, you know, and how the wife is doing? Not my problem. Doesn't matter. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Greg on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. I was listening in, you know, I was driving down to school and I'm listening to these callers call in and I'm like, I, I have no idea where you find these people. The president, you know, the way you look at it, like, if you're the president and you're you're in politics, the president is the top of the food chain. You know, it's the it's the it's the highest you can go. If you've gotten there, you've arrived. It's just like in business. You know, it's like you become CEO, you're top dog. And you know, when you reach that level, you just gotta keep the woman busy on the side. Just like give her something to do so she doesn't get involved in your business. You know, and I I mean that's the way I view this. Like the president is giving the first ladies. You know, it's like here's a little side job. I'll give you a little bit of a budget. You go do whatever you want to do, but. I'm going to run the country, and that's the way it is. You're absolutely right. You know, it's like nobody cares about the wives. It's the, you know, people elect the president, not the first lady. 
I don't see why anyone cares who the first lady is. Why does it matter? It absolutely does not. You know, it's like if, if you vote for Barack Obama, if you vote for John McCain, whoever you vote for, you know, you're voting for the president to see the president get the job done. Whatever the woman does on the side, it's just there, you know, it's like, it, it, it's just like a dog and pony show. You know, it's like, okay, so we're letting the, 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 the first lady handle some things, too, you know, we're, right. we're equal. Exactly. Right, so, here, why don't you handle literacy, honey? I'm going to go deal with Iraq. Exactly, exactly. Here's a little press conference you can hold. Yeah, you hold about drugs. Here's a kindergarten class you can talk to. Now, leave me alone. Exactly. Nobody cares I, about the first lady, and anyone who does is is a simp. Totally agree, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat to my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Charles on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Charles. Uh, this is Charles. Hey, listen. You know, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, my friends told me a lot about you. I've been listening to you now maybe two months, two or three months. And let me say you have not disappointed. Uh, I've learned, I'm 46 years old. I've learned so much. Uh, uh, and I admire and appreciate you very Let me get that out the way that I admire and appreciate you very much. Now, uh, I, I called about... Uh, about what you said about Sean Hannity, say, I think I heard you say it about a week ago, that you felt that he was a puppet for the conservative agenda. Uh, and uh, I love you to death. I love Sean. Uh, and I think my opinion is that Sean has disagreed with several things that uh, that the conservative agenda push. And when, when he differs, he says so. I think it was a little harsh. No, no, saying. no, but you see, you, you misquoted me because what I said is that he's a puppet of the Republican Party, which I do Republican believe. Party. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. And that's two different things. Okay. Sean okay. Hannity, uh, his program is uh, direct from the White House. It is direct from the Republican Party. That's where his content comes from, in oh. my opinion. Okay, so you feel that you feel that that he's pushing you that he's pushing the uh conservative party he's agenda. Pu no he's pushing the republican party's agenda and and even when he says things against them it's not that different and it's not it's, it's not that his alignment is still very loyal to no that doubt about it no doubt about and it. as much as he said he he hates john mccain as a candidate he'll end up supporting john mccain he'll get behind him he will, huh? Yes, he will. I, 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 let me say this last thing before I go, Tom. You know, I've always, I'm, I, I don't like to mention race too much, but I'm a, I'm a black man that was raised Democrat all his life. I'm 46 as I got older. I, I, I swayed much far over to the uh, conservative uh, uh, party, but now I'm more of an independent. I think there's a list on both sides that, uh, that's, that one could say, you know, doesn't make much sense. Uh, I think, I, I think I've, I would love to debate Sean on something regarding the the, the uh, Maria Shivo case, where the Republic, Republicans came and canceled their vacations over the weekend to come to overturn a law that that was in the states uh, that was a state's decision and it was in their hands to make. And, and it, it appears that whether you're Republican or Democrat, if you don't like the law, as in as in San Francisco and the gay marriages, you just find a way to uh, uh, you know just. I I, I uh, look. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm an independent. Yeah. I I am uh, I am not a registered member of a political party, and I haven't been for over 20 years. And I don't plan to be, I because I think both of them are. These are two corrupt divisions of the same corrupt conglomerate. I agree with you one hundred percent. I agree, and that's why you will <laughs> never hear me on the air saying that one party's better than the other. Uh, you know, people think they know what my politics are, but they really don't. Because I, what I really am is uh, I'm not a member of any party, including the Libertarian Party, but I'm a Libertarian. I, I want the I unlike what Republicans say. I really want the government off my back. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I want to start with the Federal Communications Commission. Get the government off my back. Wow. I, I've never met anyone I've, I've, I've felt so similar to. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Tom. And, man, I tell you, keep educating these youngsters, man, about uh, marriage. And uh, I'll keep listening and telling everybody I know. You got it, my friend. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate the call. Wow.
1-800-5800. Tom is our telephone number. Does anybody care who the first lady is? Should we care who is married to a presidential candidate? Should that have anything to do with who you vote for? If you are indeed going to vote, for Christ's sake, 1-800-5800-866. Steve is listening to our online stream in Dunkirk, New York, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going great. You have an interesting group of people calling in. Nobody cares who's uh, the first lady. Hillary ran around the uh, office and tried to make herself more important, and Obama caught her doing that. Nobody cared. She lost. She's packing her bags on her way. Um, they don't care about... America doesn't want a chick president. They, oh, they've decided. Oh, darn sure, especially if she's riding a broom. With that, a point exactly. Back. Well, that's true. And Sean Hannity is definitely a product of the right wing, but now if you want something from the left wing, Keith Olbermann should be marching goose step with uh, the left. I mean, that's about as bad as it gets. I want to strangle him when I watch him on TV. Why do you? It's just a show. Why do you get so upset about it? I, I'm being facetious. Well, I don't get I mean, upset about Sean. I don't anyway, get upset like about Rush. I, I don't get upset. By the way, Keith Olbermann's show, ironically, is produced by my producer of 20 years ago, Greg Cockrell. He's the producer. Uh, of... well, I, mentioned, I was saying that, that I really love the show, actually. Yeah. I was joking there. Yeah, um, well, you know, none of these shows. I mean, it's it's all just a bunch of hot air, and it's done to fill airtime, and and that's what everybody does in this business. And uh, I'm amazed at the number of people who get so upset about. It. The day Rush Limblubber ever tells me who to vote for or what to do, or anybody on the air, yeah, well, they me. tell you what to do every day of the mind. week. That doesn't mean people do it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they get on there uh, from both sides of the fence, and the fence is getting narrower and narrower. Uh, but you've got to make up your own mind. And the first lady, they could switch wives mid-campaign, and it wouldn't make a bit of difference. It would be interesting, but it wouldn't make a difference on who the president was. No, nobody really cares. Steve, thank you for that call. I appreciate it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred tom That is our telephone number. Matt on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, man? I'm okay. Hey, uh, I'm a fan of Sean Hannity. I listen to him uh, every other day, I guess. And yeah. then he's also on at night on Fox. And I watch him then. And uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I agree with what you're saying about him being a staunch Republican. I mean, he's come down on his own party quite a bit for their stance on immigration and not, you know, pushing things uh, in, a, in a direction where we take care of that issue and, you know, close up the borders and whatnot and just not being heavy-handed enough, you know. He, he has also said that George W. Bush will go down in history as one of the best presidents we've ever had. Well, you know... Come on. You know, <laughs> do you agree with that? Do I agree with that? You know, he is... Uh, you know, I think there's a, lo there's a lot of negative press. You know, there's there's things... I think he's saying what... what do you, know, you what agree with that? Don't start <laughs> dancing here. Do you agree when Sean Hannity no, no, says I don't, I don't, George I don't. W. Bush will go down in history as one of the best presidents we ever had? No, he's made plenty of mistakes. No, he's made a lot of mistakes. Right, so but, when uh, he says that, he is demonstrating that he is a puppet of the Republican Party. He's a patriot, Tom. Because 27% 20, of Americans approve of the job that George W. Bush has done. The other 73% don't think he's so hot. Yeah. How well, in the world I'm, How in the world can a guy with the worst approval rating ever go down in history as one of the best American presidents ever? How? Well, how can that uh, happen? That's not good. That, that, that is a little bit of uh, grandstanding. It's not a little bit of grandstanding. This yeah. is Sean Hannity letting you know that he is owned and operated by the Republican Party. But he's absolutely going to vote for John McCain. I mean, there's no of course, question. Well, I don't know who he's going to vote for, but he's absolutely going to support him on the air. I can tell you that. And all these guys. Who's, who's, the, who's the witchy lady who looks with the blonde hair who acts crazy in the Republican Party? The, what's her name? Uh, Coltier. You know, she says she's going to vote for Obama or something. That's not going to happen. Either. They're all going to go to McCain. She's another windbag, just like the rest of them. And a lot of people, once they get into the booth, they're going to be going, you know what, do I vote for Obama or do I vote for McCain? Well, and they're going to get scared and they're going to vote for McCain. Well, I don't know what's going to happen in the election, but uh, I know one thing is clear. It doesn't matter a damn who these guys are married to or having sex with. It's stupid. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.